In these videos, I'll show you how to set up Cubase, then we'll explore basic operations to help the new user operate Cubase quickly and avoid some common mistakes. Cubase lets you create professional multi-track audio recordings on your computer just like the major studios and recording artists. Cubase is the world's most popular recording platform. It's used by everyone from hobbyists to professionals, and these videos will help you get started. First, refer to the minimum system requirements for details on your computer and operating system. You'll need a My Steinberg account, which we'll create during the registration process. You'll need an audio interface and a microphone to get sound into your computer. You'll need a MIDI interface and a MIDI input device to capture your keyboard performance and to use the awesome built-in sound modules. You'll need speakers, an amplifier, and headphones to hear the music that you're making. And Steinberg offers a complete line of interfaces specially designed to work with Cubase. Configuring Cubase is a simple three-step process. Installation, Activation, and Registration. Begin by creating a My Steinberg account at steinberg.net. Then, enter the unique download access code to receive the Cubase download link and activation code. Download and install Cubase. Then, enter the activation code. That's it. No further steps are necessary. Cubase will be registered automatically. Once Cubase is installed, double-click its icon to launch the program. When Cubase opens, the main screen you'll see is the Steinberg Hub. The Hub gives you access to news. It provides links to information in the knowledge base and lets you view the training videos. The right side of the screen is what's called the Project Assistant. This has project templates for a wide range of styles. These templates are preloaded with tracks, instruments, and even drum parts to get you going quickly. But before we get going on the creative stuff, there are a couple of technical items we should go over. First, when you record, Cubase streams the audio directly to your hard drive. This means we have to tell Cubase where the project will be saved before you can begin to record. Another thing that you need to know is Cubase stores the project file and the actual audio separately. This is why you'll see a project file and an audio folder in the project folder. The project file contains all of the settings. The audio folder contains the actual audio files. The menus at the bottom of the project assistant let you choose where Cubase will store your project. You should start a new project folder for each song. This will help keep things neat and organized. You can select Prompt for Project Location if you want to manually create your project folder. Or you can select Use Default Location if you want Cubase to create the project folder for you. Let's start off with an empty project. We'll use Prompt for Project Location, then click Create. Now let's navigate to the desktop and create a new folder called My First Project then click Create and Open. The main work area shown here is called the Project Window, and you can also see the Transport Panel. Let's create a few tracks to get oriented to the Cubase environment. Open the Project menu and hover over Add Track. The drop-down menus display all the types of tracks that you can create. Let's select Audio Track. Let's create three audio tracks at once by increasing the count from one to three. We're going to make each one of these monophonic tracks by changing the configuration from stereo to mono. Then click Add Track. Okay, now let's take a look around and focus on a handful of key terms and some important icons. Along the very top of the screen are the menus. These are always visible when using Cubase. You open them with a single click. Let's reopen the project menu. You can access some menu items with key commands, which are shown to the right. For example, the Project Setup function can also be opened by pressing Shift and S. If you see three dots after the menu item, 
it means that another menu will open with more choices, like this. If you don't see any dots, then the action will be carried out as soon as you click on the menu item. If you see a black triangle like the one next to Add Track, a submenu will appear when you hover over that item. Menu items shown in gray are not available at the current time. Let's look at one more very important menu, the Help menu. The Help menu has submenus for all of your manuals. And there's a search function. Let's search on the keyword MIDI. Cubase will guide you directly to that function's location. OK, let's move into the project window itself. The top center area of the window frame shows the default author and the project name. Since we haven't saved this project yet, the project name defaults to Untitled 1. The next row of icons is called the Toolbar. The Toolbar contains icons for commonly used functions. You can right-click anywhere on the Toolbar to see a list of active sections. One quick note, you can hover over just about any icon in Cubase and it'll display a tool tip. This tells you what the icon is like this. This icon is the Window Layout button. This is a very important control, and you'll see it throughout Cubase. When you click on the Window Layout button, the active window dims and a selection box appears. Here, you can choose which panels you wish to display in any given window. In this example, you can see that we have options to display or hide the Info Line, Inspector, Status Line, and Overview Line. Anytime you see the Window Layout button, remember that there may be additional panes that are not being displayed. At the top of the project window is the project timeline. If you right-click on the timeline, you can select what units it'll display. If you left-click on the timeline, you'll move the project cursor to that location. And if you left-click and drag, you can zoom in and out. Two of the most important tools in Cubase are these white triangles, called locators. Locators define the starting and ending points of your project. You click and drag to adjust the locators. If the locators are placed correctly, the area between them will be light blue. If you reverse them, the area between the locators turns red to alert you to that problem. When we get ready to export, Cubase will only export the information between the locators. At the left edge of the project window is an area called the Track Inspector. The inspector provides quick access to the controls and settings for that track. The functions are organized under collapsible tabs. To open a tab, click on it. To close the tab, click on it again. Some track functions are duplicated in multiple locations. The first tab is open by default. Here you'll find the track name, a duplicate set of track controls, as well as controls for things like the track's volume, for its stereo panning, track delay, which is something used in synchronization, and controls for setting the track's input and output source. We'll look closely at these features in another video. This icon is the Edit Channel Settings button. This is also a very important control, and you'll see this throughout Cubase. Whenever you see this icon, you can click on it to open the editing function for that area. Finally, we have a few more basic navigation tools. You have standard scroll bars for horizontal and vertical zooming. You can click and drag the lower right-hand corner to resize your project window. And you also have a set of zoom tools. And you also have preset zoom levels available from the pop-up menus. Okay, let's move on to the next video and we'll get Cubase connected inside and out.